welcome to Discovering Star Trek. It's Entertainment Talks podcast for Star Trek Discovery on CBS All Access and Netflix. I'm your host Matthew and this is for Season 3, Episode 6 called Scavengers. I really, really enjoyed this episode a lot. Uh, there's a few moments of heartbreak, certainly. There's a few moments of death and exploding heads. Or not exploding heads, but someone being shot in the head. And uh, there's some moments of... Uh, Demotion, I suppose. Not dismissal. Michael doesn't get dismissed in this episode. She gets uh, demoted. Um, But uh, other than the sad parts of this episode, I want to talk about the really, really good parts. I think that there's two scenes in this episode that are perfect. Uh, The scene where Paul is talking to Adira about Grey and he's talking about um, Hugh. And they're kind of talking about, well, Paul is kind of mostly talking about like you know you lost someone and you don't know why they're sort of there because um he catches her sort of talking to well nobody basically um and uh, I love his approach to the scene as well like he he walks up and he's sort of like don't worry I don't think you're crazy or anything like that just like uh, allow yourself to express and kind of explain to me what's what's going on I'm here to help and it was just uh it was just a really really nice approach they both kind of connected um about you know uh dead uh, partners I suppose because obviously Hugh being Paul's boyfriend or is a husband yeah I think they're the husbands aren't they uh and then Gray and Adira being the, the boyfriend and girlfriend in that situation as well um yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was brilliant. It was uh, a little bit heartwarming at certain points. And then to connect to that scene, the other perfect scene is where Paul is kind of, you know, end of day, goes home to see, well, goes to his room, I suppose, to see his husband, reflects on what's just happened, uh, talks to Hugh about it, and again brings up the fact of, like, he, he, he never thought he'd meet somebody who's, like, lost somebody, but they're still there. Obviously in different ways, with Grey... Grey's not actually there, Adira's kind of imagining him, but with Hugh, he actually came back to life, Paul, I think, kind of recognises how lucky he is to have that situation, and to not just have uh, Hugh completely gone, Um, and yeah, he's reflecting on the the situation with Hugh himself, and uh, I thought it was fantastic, I really, really thought it was brilliant, so uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed that, Um, just the the acting, the pacing, the structure, just... uh, Everything was was brilliant with that. Really, really enjoyed it. So that was great. Um, yeah, and th- those are always the kind of characters I'd connected to. Uh, Paul and uh, and Hugh, even in previous seasons, even when Hugh was gone, I still connected to Paul. I still thought he was a great character and everything. Um, and uh, of course, Adira and Grey are both relatively new characters. And uh, I love Hugh's reaction as well. Of like, she's figuring all this out. She's sixteen. Like how brilliant she is and everything and uh, of course she's got this uh, what did they call it uh, this this thing that's going on with her I can't remember the exact term that they used um, I can't remember the exact term that it is but she's got this thing kind of going on with her and then she gets the thing taken out of Paul's arm I thought that was great and he said like how much of a kind of relief that was so overall I just thought that scene was absolutely fantastic really really enjoyed that that was great uh moving on to some of the heartbreak from the episode uh yeah this guy tries to escape and the I never did catch his name uh that the villain from this episode um he tests out this system and uh, just as the guy is basically about to kind of get away he shoots him in the head or his head kind of exploded or whatever um bit sad and uh of course along with all this as well as I would said before, and uh, I wasn't telling my audience, you guys, that uh, James Brooks was going to come back. I was just sort of guessing that it was going to happen. But James is back in this episode. I thought that was great. Obviously, he reunites um, with Michael in this episode. I thought that was great. Um, so, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. But uh, it was interesting because he kind of came up as a hologram and everything, first of all. And I thought like, oh, they'll just have him like they'll just have him like deliver a message and that'll be it. But no, he's physically in this episode as well, which is which is kinda cool. Um I I like him. I think he's cool. You know, obviously I think he's got a future there with, with Michael, uh, depending on the situation going forward. Obviously Michael's got a bit of a change of circumstances now. Uh doesn't mean it'll ref- reflect uh, affect her relationship with James Brooks, but um yeah, it's certainly going to affect her going forward. 
So I uh, thought that was interesting with him being back. thought that was very good. Uh, speaking of affected characters, we finally know, well, we kind of don't know really, why uh, we explored Philippa's, uh, Giorgio's, she, her um, psyche, I guess, her kind of PTSD about Tyler and her sort of former life. And, uh, you know, she mentioned, uh, Michael mentions Tyler at a certain point in the episode. Um when they're on Brooks's ship with the with the cat and everything because the cat's gone missing um yeah we kind of actually dive into a bit more actually see kind of what was going on and like when she froze I believe it was last week's episode when she basically just stood there and froze and then acted like nothing happened we know what's going on now um Philippa doesn't know why it's happening which I think is interesting it's sort of like Adira seeing Grey neither of them know why or how because <laughs> they discussed that Philippa's got this PTSD thing going on she doesn't know why it's happening um yeah she doesn't know why it's happening uh well she I mean we know why it's happening I uh, like the situation obviously it must have been something to do with I'm going to assume that's her version of Tyler that died because Tyler was the the trigger word for her um and then of course later there's the incident where they're fighting against the villain and um she kind of gets, uh, you know, psychically kind of attacked again, or, or gets the PTSD kind of attack again. Uh, but nobody mentions Tyler. There was a sort of like I think it was the bang of the gun or whatever it was that she used, um, the controller thing, whatever it was, um, the, the sort of caused that. So we know why it's going on, and we don't know that it's definitely. I mean, we do pretty much know that it's because of Tyler because he's the trigger word, like I said. But in the well basically flashback scenes of her hand and there's a load of blood on it and there's clearly a dead body and she's upset about something my guess would be that she's flashing back PTSD wise uh to something that happened to her version of Tyler because she's not our Philippa Giorgio is she she's not the original one that we had in the pilot because didn't that version of the character die in the pilot or like the third they re- I remember they released the first two episodes didn't they at once all, all, the, all that time ago and uh, she did die in that episode, if I remember. And this is the the different version. Um, she was from a, she's from like a particular different planet or something, isn't she? From from what I remember, because um, Michael kind of explains that, and then she talks to Michael later on, because um, she notices later on again that she's having one of her things. I don't quite know what word to use. Uh, she's sort of spa- in terms of what Michael can see. She's sort of spaced out, basically. Uh, and then ask her, like, look, what is going on? And I'm, uh, me and I guess the rest of the audience is right there. I was like, yes, please tell us what is going on. And, uh, yeah, she, um, says about, like, oh, I trusted my Michael. She sort of betrayed me. She was, I think she said sympathetic. Something was like, as sympathetic as what you are being now. And she just doesn't want to repeat previous mistakes. Totally get it. I totally understand where Philippe is coming from. Um, but we, we as the audience know that you can trust Michael with pretty much anything. Um, and probably most of the rest of the crew, crew as well. Hugh, Stamets, uh, not Stamets, Paul. Uh, and a bunch of other, Saru as well. A bunch of other characters. You can pro- probably trust them with a good few things. Uh, but she just doesn't because she sees it as a weakness in a way of like, okay, if I, if I trust this version of Michael, the same thing could happen again. Fair enough, you know. Like, it, it, it very much could, but we know this version of Michael, like she knows that this version of Michael is good, but she thought her version of Michael was good as well, and clearly that didn't really work out, so I hope that they explore this, if they're still doing the show, I think it's section 31 or something, but I haven't heard anything about it for a while, because we got the, uh, uh, what was it called, the, the the new one that was commissioned as well, the new show with um, Pike and uh, Spock, and their version of, uh, their number one because uh, they're doing the new show, aren't they? they? They did an announcement thing, I think before Discovery, before Lower Decks even aired, which still doesn't have a UK home, by the way. Um, yeah, because they're supposed to be doing the Section 31 show, aren't they? With, like, I th- that's probably supposed to have Tyler in it, I would guess. Tyler, or Philippa, and uh, whoever else is supposed to be in that. Um, I haven't heard anything about that for a while. Maybe COVID has had a sort of delayed effect on it, I don't know. Because uh, we've had Picard, we've had Lower Decks, we've had this season of Star Trek, um, and the new one with uh, Spock and Pike. Um, 
is uh, in development as well. We know that. So, uh, but yeah, to- totally get where she's coming from in terms of we know that we, we know that we can trust Michael when she thinks she could, but she thought that she could trust the previous Michael as well. So, or her Michael. So I thought that was very interesting. But yeah, finally, di- you know, clearly it's taken my interest. In terms of uh, kind of exploring that, they still need to go back to Detmer, <laughs> the uh, the pilot, and uh, figure out what's going on with her. But there seems to be going back to kind of my original point. There seems to just be this thing of in this season of like Adira seeing Gray, she doesn't know why. Um, Philippa is having these PTSD attacks, she doesn't really know why, um, or that's kind of what she says. And then Detmer is well, nobody's really well. There was that conversation like two episodes ago with uh, Hugh and Detmer of like, hey, if you want to talk, you know, and she was sort of like, oh yeah, I'll maybe take you up on that offer. And then they had the whole cinema thing. Uh, she's the next one to kind of explore from. I know we sort of saw her in the episode as well, which was uh, which was good. Um, exploring the new ship. But what I want to do at the moment is take a very quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about the Discovery finally getting upgraded. Uh, so I'll see you for that in a second. Hi there and thanks very much for listening. Today I'm here to tell you about our two different affiliate links. The first of which is our Amazon affiliate link. That's where you can shop on Amazon. We can get a small cut of what you spend but it won't cost you anything extra. So whether you're getting a gift for somebody else or treating yourself or maybe both depending on the occasion. We can get a small cut of what you spend but it won't cost you extra. You can find the link to our Amazon affiliate link in your show notes. The second affiliate link for today is our Kualu affiliate link. If you want to get started with a website and a domain name of your choice, you can simply sign up with Kualu using the link in the show notes. They also have a live chat support system that's in the bottom right hand corner as well. So if you need help with getting set up, Kualu will be able to help you with that as well. The links for both of these can be found in your show notes for Kualu and the Amazon affiliate link. If you would like to get the ad-free versions of Entertainment Talks podcast and support us along the way, you can simply sign up over on our Patreon page. You can sign up either as a creator or as a patron. There's no difference there for the time being. And you can get your ad-free podcast over there. It's a great way to support us on Entertainment Talk and to get rid of the ads and get your ad-free podcasts. You can also support Entertainment Talk on Patreon at the $3 level tier. This gets you a chance to request a review from us of your favourite TV show or film. But it's one per month. So one TV show or film review per month. It's up to you which one you want to choose. We will watch a few episodes of the TV show that you choose. Or of course if it's a film we'll just watch that film and we will review that for you on that month. And then when it gets to the next month, you can request a new TV show or a film review of your choice. That's $3 level tier. That does also, of course, include your ad-free podcasts for the month as well. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the show. All right, recently on Entertainment Talk, what have we got for you here? We've got another episode of our Gaming Talk podcast. Uh, The next generation of video games and consoles is here. So the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series S and Series X. The X is the more powerful version, basically, if you're confused. Uh, You know, a lot of people are very confused about uh, the situation there. There's There's a lot of different Xboxes out there at the moment. But you can either get an Xbox Series S or a Series X. Xbox Series X is the more powerful version. And then there's just the PS5. Uh, and then the digital version of the PS5. Uh, so we talked about that being here and kind of a new era for gaming. And we went through all or most of the uh, Game Award nominations for 2020. Ghost of Tsushima and uh, Last of Us 2 absolutely dominated. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 4 was also nominated for Best Family Game. And Iron Man VR was given some love because nobody else apart from me would give it any love. Because uh, I'm pretty much the only one that kind of enjoyed it or whatever. Um... But yeah, we talked about all of that and uh, went through the Game Award nominations. The Game Awards themselves are going to be hosted, I believe it's on the 10th of December, by Jeff Keighley, who owns and runs the Game Awards themselves. So we'll see who wins what and what gets announced as well on that particular day. Uh, Walking Dead World Beyond is still continuing. Season 1, Episode 7 is the newest for those. There's three episodes left of the season. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 6. Next week's episode, so Episode 7, is going to be the mid-season finale. But we're up to Season 6, Episode 6 for uh, 
Fear the Walking Dead Let's Play Sunday episodes for Fall Guys. That was the solo episode. Star Trek Discovery, obviously, still doing, which you're listening to right now anyway. Uh, Becoming Heisenberg, Breaking Bad Season 1 feedback, we gathered up all of your feedback from the first season of podcast, the first seven episodes for the first season, and did a feedback episode, because we had no feedback at the time, because nobody knew we were recording them, so we released the seven episodes weekly, scheduled them, let the feedback build up, and then we uh, did a whole episode dedicated to that, so that was pretty fun to do, and we'll be back at some point in 2021 to talk about uh, Breaking Bad Season 2 whenever we choose to do that so that's that and lastly of course there is the united cast as well uh, the latest episode was from a night beating everton 3-1 away manchester united return tomorrow to face west brom at home on saturday night and we will see how all that goes when that happens as well but that's pretty much everything we've been doing at the moment on entertainmenttalk.org and on podcast platforms yeah uh discovery's been um upgraded Finally, there was a nice little montage at the start of the episode, and um, we saw lots of different techy, sciencey sort of things happening to the ship. Uh, lots of different upgrades sort of happening. We saw like the outside view of the ship, and something was happening to the wing of it. Uh, I didn't quite catch like what all the upgrades were. I'm sure that they'll just mention them when they use them or whatever. But uh, it's been upgraded nonetheless, and um, Paul's little. Uh, room that the spore drive room got updated there's the gui stuff in there as well um i kind of like how they just just what they do completely with paul and adira in this episode because early on adira uh upgrades paul's little spore drive thing and there's the green gui sort of pads they make a little joke about that that's pretty nice pretty fun as well um but yeah there's been just so many times over the last three seasons different characters boarding the ship and talking about like oh you know this ship's really old and it started to get a little bit irritating of like okay why aren't they upgrading this ship and i don't know why they couldn't do it themselves because clearly this uh the federation helped them out with the the admiral kind of giving the go-ahead on that because uh, trust me if the admiral doesn't give you the go-ahead on something you basically can't do it um but yeah the federation helps them out upgrades the ship uh there was the flight controls and the scanners and everything that were upgraded basically everything uh it still looks the same that like from the outside of the ship which i think is i think that's a good thing anyway you don't want to like drastically change the design of the whole thing just the tech side of the ship was upgraded so glad that finally happened and uh, it was like literally straight from the from the uh get-go of the episode that they uh started the little uh montage of the ship getting upgraded so uh really like that glad that the ship has finally been upgraded and we can move on and uh yeah use some of this new technology when the uh, opportunities arrive uh speaking of opportunities uh let's talk about michael tilly the cat and uh james brooks of course um the cat kind of goes missing for a little bit. There's a funny little montage of Tilly trying to control said cat. And uh, goes under the bed and doesn't want to know. So uh, that's that's cats for you. Uh, I did used to have a cat. She passed away a few years ago. Um, so I, I know what it's like to have cats and that sort of thing. And uh, they do tend to do things like that. I'm sure that David could... Um, could uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? He he knows all about that as well because obviously he's got some some cats and stuff, uh, but yeah, um, David of course my co-host. In case you're wondering who I'm talking about, but I'm sure my, I'm sure most of you know who David is by now. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a that was a cool little scene. Uh, Brooks's cat kind of getting lost and and stuff like that. Um, but moving on from that, let's go to the end of the episode and the consequences. Michael does deray uh, deray uh, 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 disobey. Sorry. Uh, direct orders from uh, both the Admiral pretty much and Saru. Saru tells her not to go on this mission. He understood her intentions. Nobody did get, well, somebody did get killed, but no, nobody from the Discovery crew got killed, which was good. Um, and in a surprisingly, well, not surprisingly emotional scene, I didn't think it would be as emotional as what it was, but once, like, once Saru, once the Admiral went away and the sort of pr- professional, um, stuff was over with uh like the professional orders from him and stuff once it got to once it got past that and the scene got to saru talking to michael and they start talking about trust and i let you be my number one and all this sort of thing that's when the scene started to turn a bit emotional of like we know why she did it she did uh, uh disobey i almost said that word incorrectly again uh disobey 
direct orders she did do that but it's when Saru starts to because there's one thing to, if Saru had just gone to her and said like look you disobeyed a direct order um I'm gonna demote you to I can't remember what he said like an engineer thing or something she's not number one anymore basically um and if if it would have just sort of been that but he starts talking about the trust and they've known each other for so long and then of course she was away for some length of time and then they reunited and that was all great but it's when he talks about that that it just it starts to get pretty emotional and you start to see a bit of a reaction from uh, Michael herself um and uh, started getting quite powerful and quite emotional the scene itself um and the, I guess because some people might look at that scene and think like oh Saru what are you doing just let her off let's just get back to the discovery and kind of get on with things to me looking at that scene and I'm sure other people feel this way as well if Saru ter- if the Admiral walks away because the Ad- Admiral basically says to Saru like okay this is up to you Captain to, to figure this out you know nobody got killed nobody on the discovery got killed anyway um so i'll let you deal with it which i was a little bit surprised about actually i thought that i thought that the admiral would just sort of um dismiss her himself because he's kind of above board um over saru isn't he because he's the admiral and he's even though he's the captain of the discovery he's the admiral of the federation and that um but yeah if if saru would have gone up to michael afterwards once the admiral gone away and said look you know it's fine let's just you know i'll I'll let you off let's go back to the discovery that kind of doesn't really show saru using his power in the right way like you can't just just because she's you know your good friend and you've trusted her and all that sort of thing you can't just kind of dismiss what she did i suppose and you know she didn't go and kill anybody or anything like that but she did disobey a direct order so yeah it seems harsh it seems a bit awkward and sort of wrong but yeah if it plus the other thing as well is if if saru turns around and says like oh you know don't worry about it and someone finds out he's done that namely the admiral will probably find that out saru saru himself would probably be looked down on as a captain and he would probably he would probably get in trouble himself uh from from well maybe you wouldn't get in trouble from the admiral because the admiral kind of said it's up to you but he would kind of he, he would everyone would kind of look at saru a little bit differently i think maybe um in terms of like him making because i do think that if he just lets her off and lets her go that he's kind of not done his job properly i guess um but it was a very interesting scene nonetheless uh kind of a powerful scene and uh we'll see where they where they're friendship because there is a friendship there isn't there but there's also the working relationship um and we'll see how that goes from now on so yeah plenty of really really good stuff in this episode emotional conversations interesting conversations um exploring different characters and what they're going through in this episode Uh, a couple of really perfect scenes with some of the characters I, i really like and care about um i think this is one of the best episodes of star trek discovery i mean i can't specifically off the top of my head remember every single episode but this has got to be in the top three of the of the best episodes of the of the whole series and i know we've only had two and a half seasons at at this point but uh we've had some pretty strong episodes we've had some episodes that have been a bit weak but we've had some pretty strong ones and this this is definitely up there so i uh, thoroughly enjoyed it but uh, that's pretty much it from me and my thoughts on all the different things in this episode uh what did you think what do you think of saru's decision it's uh it's certainly up for debate i would say but you know do you think he did right with the authority that he's got are you surprised as i am that the admiral kind of not let it go but sort of handed the responsibilities to, to saru um yeah what do you think of everything that happened in this episode and the conversation between hugh paul Grey, uh, well not Grey because Grey's not really there uh, and Adira, what do you think of all that and the sort of connection there, let me know all your thoughts and feelings and questions and comments and concerns about Star Trek Discovery or anything related to Entertainment Talk Matthew at EntertainmentTalk.org Twitter at E-Talk UK, there's contact page and information in your show notes great episode, looking forward to seeing where things go from here, uh, especially in regards to Saru and Michael and how that's going to go and she's not number one anymore um well speaking of new things one last thing for me to talk about they've got new badges in this episode which let them seemingly teleport around the ship which i mean i know they could kind of already do that but in a different way in sort of a certainly a quicker way because nobody was um oh god what's the word um there's a particular word isn't there when you get somebody aboard your ship 
oh god I can't think of what the word's called you know what I'm talking about but uh, they, they didn't do any of that in this episode they were just sort of jumping around the ship and a uh, nice comedic couple of moments for the episode that guy that was constantly seemingly teleporting in the wrong places because every time he popped up it was like oh crap I didn't mean to end up here and then just as just as James and Michael go to kiss like literally the moment before that uh, or just as it's about to happen he, he teleports in front of them I thought that was pretty good so um yeah, great stuff this week. Really, really enjoyed it. But if you like what you've heard today and you want to uh, support Entertainment Talk and get more involved, there's a lot of different options for you. Uh, you can first of all go over to entertainmenttalk.org and check out all the rest of our content. Everything that we do is over there. TV, video games, films, and Manchester United when we return on Saturday. Uh, options for supporting us is a few different ones of those. Uh, Patreon, of course. If you want to check us out over there, Entertainment Talk on Patreon. Just search for us or go to patreon.com forward slash entertainment talk uh, or check out the link in the show notes. The $1 and $3 level tiers, that's for every podcast and review options. Uh, word of mouth, you can simply tell people that you know about the website and iTunes feeds. Uh, social media, same thing, you can do that as well over there. Uh, in terms of TV and films, uh, if you want your up-to-date reliable TV and film news, David is of course over on geektown.co.uk running the ship over there. Um, so if you want your TV and film news, up-to-date and reliable TV and film news, geektown.co.uk, you can get that in weekly podcast format for, through uh, Geek Town Radio. Those are on Tuesdays. You can either find that on podcast services by searching for Geek Town or by going to geektown.co.uk. Uh, over on Twitch, Bex is streaming daily over there, doing lots of fun, cool, interesting things over there. Uh, if you search for Trista Bytes, Trista B-Y-T-E-S, go and uh, follow her over there. Uh, you can also find me streaming different video games over on Twitch if you search for eTalk UK. Got Walking Dead, got Watch Dogs Legion, did the uh, Batman Arkham VR, that's on YouTube now. Uh, if you want to go and check that out, uh, eventually I'll get back to the Pez Master League. I'm just in between a lot of different games at the moment, but uh, check me out over there, over on eTalk UK. Um, over on Twitch and lastly look out for Let's Play Sunday episodes as well. Thanks for listening. Great episode this week. Thoroughly enjoyed it and I'll see you for whatever episode 7 brings. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>